This is Summer Money. Hi there, I'm Chloe James and this is Summer Money. Over the next hour, we're going to take a look at the latest trends in small business, fintech, personal finance and investing to get your new year started right. Ahead on tonight's program, we take a look at the biggest tech stories of the year. It's mining, but not as you know it. So how feasible is asteroid mining and how to make the most of loyalty points to maximise your travel experiences? But first, trends in consumer habits can often make or break a startup business. So how can an entrepreneur create a successful business even if they aren't in a booming industry? Joining me now to share his insights is Mark Lim, who is the Managing Director of Business Growth Specialist Magnetic Alliance. Hi Mark, welcome. Hi Chloe, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, awesome to have you here and from my hometown Adelaide. Nice to, nice to be here. Yeah, great. So tell me about Magnetic Alliance, who you are and what you do. Okay, well, we're a slightly different concept, Chloe. We are like a professional services firm, but we connect all different functions together. So we're kind of like an accountant, but not really an accountant, but also a little bit like a lawyer or a marketing firm, but we combine all the things together so that we're working towards an outcome, not so much an output. Fantastic. And I mean, you're obviously a consultancy. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about how much you think businesses out there really see the benefit of working with a consultancy such as yours. Yeah, um, I think that uh, most of the people we come across, Chloe, they, they usually want to grow, but it, it's usually, they, they usually look for uh, help when they're in trouble. So it would be great if they could actually do a little bit more planning up front and get some help before they get in trouble. And mm. there's only very few who actually, who actually plan ahead. Yeah, so how, how do you get that idea out there that people really should be using a consultancy, particularly in the business space? I think that there's a limited group of people who really want to grow. There's a lot of people who are quite scared of what's happening in the market. Uh, they see a flat market and they, they actually, you know, they're, they're waiting for things to happen. So I think if people want to look for help, I think, that, I think that a lot of professional services firms need to get better at marketing and going out there and, and providing benefits that people can clearly see. Yeah, absolutely. You, you spoke then about sort of a flat market and a tough market. I guess over the past year we've seen lots of challenges across business. How do you encourage people to really sort of grow and, and build a strong foundation when it comes to quite a flat market? Yeah, uh, that's a good question, Chloe. I think that um, with any type of business, if they know how to actually pull the levers that help them grow, they can grow in any type of market. So there's a number of different levers that they can use to do that. But the, the very first thing is awareness and education. So uh, business owners, especially in the private business space, uh, need to look at educating themselves on how they can grow. And, mm. and then they can go and look for the type of help that they need. Yeah, and, and, and with the right experts is kind of an, like an organisation like Magnetic Alliance really helps with. I've, I had a look at your business obviously before we came to air and you spoke about some sort of experiences that you have with problems that business owners face and I'm sure the audience can really understand tonight things around strategy, sales, finance, people and leadership. I just wondered if you could talk to a couple of those points and, and how you advise people across say, let's just say strategy and maybe, and maybe people. Okay, sure. Well, the, that's, a, the, that's two areas that uh, come up quite often. Uh, like I mentioned to you before, mm -hmm. we had uh, over 137 clients that we work with very closely and strategy and people uh, were a problem across the board. So with strategy, it's all about knowing where you're going. It's having a clear direction of where you're going. So it's about understanding what's happening in your market, about the demand for your products and services, and, mm. and having a plan on how you're going to win uh, with your competition, or yeah, how you're going to collaborate. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry, I was just going to say, doing your sort of market research really into exactly what your, what your customers want and need. Yes, exactly. A lot of, 
a lot of businesses out there uh, are very product driven. So they have a product and that's what they've got. So that's what they sell. But they've got to look at what customers are looking for, what their pain points are, and what their unsatisfied needs are. And mm. then they can tailor their products around that and they know there'll be a demand for what they're, they're selling. Yeah, absolutely. When we're talking about people, I mean, one of the other points I made there was people, which I think is such an interesting part of any business, a people, a culture. How do you advise when it comes to, to people within teams and then I guess how they then on serve their own clients? That's a good question because big businesses and small businesses alike really struggle with the people side mm. and it's always evolving. So the, the culture is really the glue that holds everything together, the, in, the environment has to be susceptible for people to succeed. You mm. can take a person that's performing really well in one business, put them in another business, and they can, they can be really average because mm. the culture is not, not set for them to, to perform. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good piece of advice and looking for the right fit, I guess, when you're thinking of building your business for people watching Summer Money tonight, you know, looking for the people that fit into your business model and I guess vice versa, you know, if you're going to work for a business, you really need to make sure you have a culture match. Yeah, that's right. The, the culture is one of the, the, the skills can always be built, but, you know, the, that fit really needs to take place. Yeah, um, High, I always, higher for I attitude always, over experience, I think sometimes is important. Sorry, continue, Mark. Yeah, Sorry. definitely. Uh, one thing that I always um, tell clients is that if you have the right people, you can make anything happen. But if you have the wrong people, you can take a great business and actually, I've, I've seen businesses go down, down and, and really um, crumble because they had the wrong people and they had the wrong culture as well. Yeah. Well, they didn't the, the have wrong the culture. People in it. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's really some fantastic advice. You've got some pretty impressive client a client base, you said 137, and I know that you've got some billionaire clients. We're talking, you know, big deal people. Why do they come to a business such as yours? Yeah, I, I actually asked uh, one of them, uh, and I said, why, why do you get um, help from people like us? Because you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And yep. they said, look, I'm really good at what I do. I'm great at my industry. I know my stuff in my industry, but I don't know all this behind the scenes business stuff. I have mm. to hire people to run that for me and I need to know that they're doing the right thing. So I really need help in that area. Yeah, so, so, they, can, so they can concentrate on what they know best. Exactly, yeah. yeah they fant work to their strengths. Yeah, fantastic. How do, how do some small businesses out there today, we've got a lot of small businesses who watch the show, compete against you know, the really big corporates and I think they're probably doing a better job today than they ever have done before, would you agree? I absolutely agree. Small businesses are the heart of innovation, Chloe. And you know, big businesses are really slow, and they have a lot of layers. And they, to, to get things done, really simple things, they have to go through all sorts of approvals. So, if a small business really wants to compete with big businesses, they got to use their size to their advantage. So, being really responsive and and innovating, because what these big businesses do, they end up being too slow and they end up buying the innovators because <laughs> all the work's been done for them. Yeah, so, so aim to get bought maybe by someone bigger. Potentially. That yeah. that's, uh, seems to be a trend these days, especially in the tech world. Yeah, it certainly does in fintech. I love that you've brought it up. I'd love to just uh, kind of close out, Mark, on your advice for 2018. So businesses out there, you know, what, what would be your great piece of advice for entrepreneurs or business owners looking ahead, looking to the new year? I think that uh, in 2018, um, average is on the way out. You've got to be really good at what you do. The market's really transparent, so anyone can get any information that they want about a business, your products, your pricing, your reviews. You've got to aim for excellence, and you've got to get a really strong foundation underneath you to support growth. Yeah, I, love, I mean, two great pieces of advice that aim for excellence. I love it. Mark, we're going to wrap there. So nice to talk to you in Adelaide tonight. Um, enjoy. Thank you so much for coming on Summer Money. Great to talk to you, Chloe. Thank you. So coming up, we're going to take a look back at the year that was in tech news. Stay with us.